The Pale King was once a worm, only it was spelled with a Y and not an O. Worms were very large creatures that had a foresight ability. This ability allowed them to somewhat predict the future. But then they died. Like, all of them died somehow. The Pale King was one of these worms, but he decided to rebirth himself into this fork-like thing with a rope. He did this to try to be more similar to the common bugs of the kingdom. Not sure why he wanted to be a fork, and not like, I don't know, a knife or the Sky Shredder from Bloons Tower Defense 6, but okay. The Pale King then decided to use his magical powers to make a bunch of bugs smart. Then he wanted these bugs to worship in, and in exchange he would make the kingdom last forever. Yeah, the Pale King kinda didn't exactly fulfill his end of the deal. The bugs saw the Pale King as a deity. They worshipped him and made idols for him. Supposedly, the Pale King emitted a bright, pure aura, brighter than the lights of the delicate flower and even your mom's phone screen. Eventually, everyone started worshipping the Pale King, even the Moth Tribe, who abandoned their creator, the Radiance. But, more on that later. The Pale King decided to begin construction on his kingdom. He created things like the roads, stagways, trams, the capital, computers, TV shows, and even a social credit system that I showed off in a previous video. Then the Radiant showed up and ruined everything. She infected almost all the bugs by entering their minds and forcing them to drink this weird Fanta knockoff. She did this because everyone abandoned her and she wanted to be remembered again. The Pale King's plan to stop the infection was to stuff it inside a child of his, known as a vessel. These vessels were these weird creatures with horns and void inside of them, birthed from the Pale King and the Queen, the White Lady. These vessels were created in the Abyss, which is a giant pit that is home to the Shadow Creepers, the Void, and even Lord Farquaad. To protect the vessel and seal the Radiance further, the Pale King wanted to put it inside of an egg, which has a door that is sealed by three beings called Dreamers. These Dreamers would fall asleep, and until all three die, the door remains shut, which definitely makes sense. When asked, two of the dreamers immediately accepted, but the other one, Hera, wanted a daughter in exchange. So the Pale King and Hera had a child named Hornet. Anyways, this vessel was known as the Hollow Knight, or at least one of them was. All the other millions of vessels were defective, and therefore they were discarded into the abyss, left to die. They were defective because they weren't hollow. Being hollow just means to be completely void of emotions, feelings, and thoughts. After the Hollow Knight was born, the Pale King spent a lot of time with it. The Pale King sort of sabotaged himself by doing this, since he gave the vessels emotions, feelings, and thoughts, by developing a sort of father-son relationship. Kinda dumb, not gonna lie. After the Hollow Knight was chained up in this magical egg, the infection disappeared and Hollow Nest finally had peace. Well, until the Radiance somehow managed to infect everything again. At this point, the Pale King was just kinda done with this whole situation, and he decided to move not only himself, but also his palace away to some weird alternate realm, abandoning the White Lady back in Hollow Nest. So at least the Pale King and his royal retainers were safe, well, until the king somehow died. Then, one of his discarded vessels decides to do the ultimate flex by not only outliving the king, but also beating up the corpse. The point is, the king is dead, most of his children are also dead, and the entire kingdom was destroyed. The end.